Alright, that's not how this video was supposed to start, but we'll go with it. That's Mule Deer Buck. <laughs> We're gonna just head down to the stand then. Alright, so basically, I was going to be fast traveling to start this video, but we'll actually go ahead and try to bring that guy in. But I wanted to hunt Timbergold Trails today, to be honest, from the thing that happened on last Friday's livestream, which I'm sure is like the title and thumbnail of this video, so actually while we sit in this stand and wait for this buck to come in, we'll actually play the clip from that livestream, because just two weeks in a row we had incredible luck with, I mean again, it's in the title and thumbnail, so I'm not spoiling anything, a giant non-typical mule deer buck, so here's that, and then we'll get back to this hunt. Look how just wonky he is compared to the, <laughs> the typical. I think he's kind of like the bigger of this base frame and then just tines everywhere. But literally like seconds ago we were talking about non-typicals being added and stuff to call the wild and uh, there we go. The biggest male. Let's see what this dude scores. Good weight on him. 359. He's bigger than the last one. Are you serious? <laughs> it took me five years to kill a 300 non tip mule deer. And then we just do two in two weeks. Or, I mean, technically in one week. A week's time. So, yeah, again, just absurd luck. Like, during the course of a Twitch stream, just for things to work out as they did to end up not spooking it. I was hosting multiplayer in that game, so like just the fact that nobody happened to be in that area, so I went over there, was just all cool. And I didn't actually have the trophy shot clipped, so sort of just threw that on screen so you guys could see exactly you know what we ended up with. But this buck's decent; he's like 150. And since we are gonna fast travel, I do want to go ahead and use the Mosin, though I really can't see him that well. That'll work just fine. So one other quick. Uh, order of business as we start this video and head over here to claim this guy. The pull for the limbs of my obsession bow uh, that I'm going to be using for this season is now up on the Meat Hunters YouTube channel, so I'll link the channel in the description if you guys want to go vote on that. But the Stars and Stripes Riser won yesterday, so just in case you don't know uh, what the winner of that pull was, it was the Stars and Stripes one, and the two options for today are Black Limbs and Stars and Stripes Limbs, so if you want to check that out, that is going to be down there, but Decent little buck. I think he's, yeah, 144. I figured he was somewhere in that area. And we are going to head to this tent because this is where I started when I had the huge non tip last time I hunted here. Okay, so I think this kind of worked. I decided to call this wolf in because it was nothing but does over here. And it sort of is spooking some of them. It didn't spook all of them like I thought it would. And I was hoping maybe I could, like, get to shoot it without spooking the does, but they're not really running at all where I'm heading. I'm going to go north up this river. So, I think a wolf's going to be more interesting than any doe or cow elk we can get. And we're going to go to the same place and see what's there. So, this ground blind right here is where we shot that non-typical. So, we're going to go to that and then the plan is probably going to be go like in this way and then out and up the river. That's what the plan was last time, until a non-typical showed up, so we'll see if it stays that way, but that's what I want to do. What the heck? How is that guy still here? I didn't even notice him. What in the world? I don't know if he's spooked. Okay, that could have been really bad. Like, if we spooked the buck, he could have ended up running and spooking the elk. But I don't understand how he doesn't know we're here. I guess, like, it's the um, fall forest camo we're wearing. Although I've only got it, I think, for pants and boots. I'm wearing, like, the 10th anniversary jacket, black gloves, and a cowboy hat. Which, I want to say the cowboy hat does actually affect deer. Like, there's some camouflage from it or something. But, uh... Okay. <laughs> Ooh, he actually looks decent. I don't think he had back tines. I'm pretty sure maybe at best he has one. But yeah, it's a good frame on him. He's up to 370 estimate with just the one back tine. 
Alright, ah, nice. So he's probably maybe 340, 350 area. He's got a really short uh, time right here. If I can get my binoculars. This one. And that one's actually not great either, but it's at least a little better. So he is 339, not too bad. And we're almost over to that other lake. There wasn't anything like back at the ground blind, but everything seems to be just a little bit away from it. That guy's at least like decent. He's pretty much the same as the one that we started this hunt off with. But this is like the second half of a group. The first two came in and spooked and they were like just small ones. I was trying to get around them, but luckily they didn't spook these guys. And hopefully, I thought he had noticed me crouching forward. Just get the shot in there before he decides to spook too. What in the world? There was a, there was another deer back there of some kind. It didn't look very big, but apparently this other lake kind of has a lot of stuff. Decent heart shot, and he's 146, so I think he's the biggest buck we've killed other than the not typical, of course. But I still need to get down to this lake, because usually there's a lot of stuff around here. So just for fun, I think we're going to go ahead and get that doe with the Mosin, because I want to fast travel, and we might as well make use of the gun when we're going to leave the area anyway. I wonder where I hit her, because I actually thought that was going to be good. But she died, so couldn't have been too bad. Actually, it was Lungblood, too. I'm surprised she went anywhere. Because usually the Mosin has more than enough knockdown power. Even for single lung, but of course, she didn't really run anywhere, so... I'm kind of stuck. I want to fast travel here. But if I do that, then we're only looking at Mule Deer. And up here could be Mule Deer and Elk. So I think we're going to go here and then maybe try that other spot at the end. So, uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted to hear, but we'll get down to the river where we can see better and see what else is around. So I think we got to get this cow because I'm afraid she's going to spook towards the bull back there. So we should probably stop again here in a second. They only stop for like really brief amounts of time. So you got to really be on that. But I think this bull... Wherever he got to is being pushed around by wolves. I want to see what that bear is since we can get a quick spot before it goes into the brush, but it kind of looks decent, yeah. His score doesn't go all the way to max, but he wouldn't be too bad, so maybe we can get the elk, otherwise that bear is going to be an option too. I'm actually quite tempted to use a gun, because he's not huge, he's up to 395, there's no way he's anywhere near that, but... He's spooked, and I'm probably going to have a hard time getting in bow range, so I think if I can get this lined up. That should be good. It's kind of difficult to aim at that range with this scope on the Mosin, but I just love the gun. Like, the sound of it and everything is really good. But, I mean, we are, like, hunting along the river, so it shouldn't be a huge deal to spook stuff. A lot of areas we'll be able to see anyway. Like, the brush, even along the sides, isn't that thick. Like, we can see all those elk running away. And, I mean, we can still see them going, so I think it's going to be alright to spook some stuff. But, just hopefully that was enough to bring that elk down. Hey, a lung heart, so it must just be only reaching single lung. Which, I don't know, I don't do a whole lot of long shots with this gun, so maybe that's completely normal, but he didn't really go anywhere either. But I think he's maybe 330s to 340s again, somewhere in that range, but 100 and Almost 50 meter lung shots, not bad. He was only 315. I thought he was a little bigger. Doesn't even have really a short time to blame. Just, I guess his frame is smaller than I thought, but still over 300. That's not too bad. So I haven't actually gone that far. Like, these dudes must have been just out of hearing range when I shot the elk, but I kind of want to use the gun again just because... They're all going to spook in the same direction, and most animals, like, where we're headed, would spook from them running past them. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to pop this, like, average size buck. He should be right in that, like, 140s to 150s range again. So hopefully... That's a little better. It's very satisfying to drop something, like, at a decent range with that scope. That may have even been a hard shot, I'm not sure. But, I mean, yeah, I literally went 
100 meters, it's not going to affect too much. And to be honest, I just really like shooting this gun. So the more opportunities I get to uh, shoot it, the better. I'm not sure if they're the same deer, but I just saw some trotting out there. And yeah, 101 meter hard shot. That's not super far. And he's actually 137. So he's a little bit small for that rack, but pretty decent with that scope. I like that. And I don't know where the deer I just saw trotting got to. They were in the water. Looks like a pretty small buck, so I think that's going to be the ones from the herd we just shot him out of. Oh, boy. Um, hi. Are you just going to bluff charge? That's not fun. It's also not fun when I completely miss. Did I even hit you yet? really have no idea. There we go. Well, that was interesting, but also kind of anticlimactic. I was really hoping it would completely charge me. Oh, we actually had a lung hit in there? That's not too bad. But we're like minutes away from being able to fast travel again, so I'm probably going to go down to that spot I mentioned earlier for Mule Deer. And especially since we just shot so much, I don't expect to be seeing a whole lot more up this way, so... We'll kind of run and get closer and hopefully reduce the number of camp and supplies it's going to take to get there. And just do that until we can actually fast travel. That's what I was hoping would happen when we would come here. So he's right down there. Should be good to just crouch all the way to the stamp. And unfortunately he's by himself and pretty much just an average buck, but... I do think he's going to be our last kill, because I want to go back to the Trophy Lodge. And actually get our non-typical in there, because I haven't done that yet. And I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, because there's not a lot of room in the Classic Lodges. And I'll have to see where we're going to put that new guy, but... I guess this hunt wasn't that great. We had a couple of, like, decent elk and stuff and some average size mule deer, but... Just, uh... I don't know. I guess the entire point of the video was to have the non-tips, so still pretty happy with that. So let's head back to the Trophy Lodge. So really what it comes down to is, do I remove the little piebald buck? Or do I remove one of the non-tips and do, like, both mule deer down here and one non-tip up where that one is? I kind of want to do the two mule deer non-tips down at the bottom, so let's set that up. Yeah, I think I like that, because I like to try to have especially the rares still displayed, even though the non-tips are kind of, like, more impressive. But this is the one from last week, 357.481, and this is the one from today, 359.138. And you can see they're actually quite similar. Like, those back tines cross, the uh, main beams almost touch in the front. There's just obviously huge, massive tines everywhere. I didn't realize how similar they were when I shot the second one, I thought actually that there was quite a difference, but it is essentially, or maybe exactly, the same, like, shape and stuff. Which is interesting. I don't know that I've ever shot two non-tips that look so similar before, especially two big ones, but evidently that's a thing. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.